When the next Washington social season began in December, I was a 52-year-old bachelor. But in February of 1843, things began to change. That young lady, my son John Jr., had brought to the mansion in 1842, returned again for the social season, and she was flirting with everyone, including several congressmen, James Buchanan to name one, and three different Supreme Court justices. She was considered one of the most beautiful and well-known young ladies in the country. There had already been poetry of praise published about her in various newspapers. She was the talk of the town, 23-year-old Julia Gardner, known as... The Rose of Long Island. My family, the 12th generation of Gardners, lived in East Hampton, Long Island. I had attended the finest schools for girls and felt at ease in society. But I was bored, looking for adventure. I certainly became a celebrity when my picture appeared on an advertisement handbill for a New York dry goods store. This had never happened to a lady before. As soon as we arrived in Washington in December of 1842, my beau, men of standing both young and old, began calling on me. The New York Herald wrote, The most beautiful and accomplished Miss Gardner, one of the loveliest women in the United States, is in the Capitol and was most admired during her promenade on the avenue today. Members of the House, grave senators not too old to feel the power of youth and beauty, judges, officers of the army and navy, all vying with each other to do homage to her influence of her charms. <laughs> My family dined at the mansion with President Tyler and his family several times over the Christmas and New Year holiday. On February 7th, I received an invitation from the president to play cards with him. Alone. Well, that wasn't the only game he had in mind, as by the end of the evening, he was actually chasing me downstairs <laughs> and around tables trying to kiss me. Then, just weeks later at the Washington birthday ball, he cornered me alone and asked me to marry him. I had never thought of love, so I said, no, 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 shaking my head with each word, which flung the tassel of the Greek cap I was wearing into his face with every move. <laughs> it was undignified, <laughs> but it amused me very much to see his expression as he tried to woo me while the tassel brushed his face. <laughs> Our relationship continued for a year and was the talk of all the papers. Then fate stepped in and seemed to point to our spending a lifetime together. On February the 28th, 1844, I and 400 other guests, including Julia, her father, and Dolly Madison, were sailing along the Potomac River aboard the naval vessel, the Princeton. Now, the highlight of the trip was the firing of what at that time was one of the largest naval guns in the world. It had been fired twice to the thrill and the enjoyment of everyone. While below deck for dinner, someone suggested one final firing. Now many made their way up to the deck including Julia's father and I was just about to go when my son-in-law William Walla <laughs> broke into a sea chanty. Well I had to stay and listen to him finish his song. That tarrying may have prevented the unusual event of two presidents dying in the same four-year term. Because in the next few moments the sound of the huge gun firing filled the air and then cries of, Surgeon! Surgeon! resounded. The gun had exploded, spewing chunks of hot metal into the crowd, killing a number of those assembled, including Mr. Gardner. Julia fainted in my arms at the sight, and I carried her off the ship. The first face I saw when I revived was John's. In my morning, I grew closer and closer to John. Yes, he seemed to fill the place left by my father, but I felt love also. The 30-year difference in our ages meant little to me, as I wrote to John. There may be those with courtier tongue who homage pay to me, but deep the tribute love compels with which I bend to thee. Let ruthless age then walk thy brow, it need not touch thy heart. And whatever changes time may bring, 
I'll love thee as thou art. Then listen, dearest, to my strain, and never doubt its truth. Thy ripened charms are all to me, which I prefer to youth. <laughs> On the night of June the 25th, 1844, a mystery man entered a hotel in New York City. All the hotel employees were detained that night and not allowed to leave. Secrecy was of the utmost, because the next day, in the Church of the Ascension on Fifth Avenue, Julia, wearing a crown of white roses, wed the President of the United States. I was 54, she was 24. <laughs> 